Welcome to podcast 6.2. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at this thing called Lewis Dot Structures. And what Lewis Dot Structures do is they show electrons in covalently bonded molecules. And as you know from this chapter, we've looked at we've looked at what a covalent bond is. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at kind of the model for how to make molecules. And this is going to help us a lot in the future when we're figuring out some properties of of uh, certain molecules, but uh, we, there's models in chemistry all over the place, and this is one that you're probably going to enjoy because it's a pretty pretty straightforward one. So for Lewis dot structures, this is kind of how we start. We start with a central atom, whatever atom it happens to be, right? Now that represents the nucleus. Let's say, for example, we're dealing with carbon like I have. Now I'm going to write the electron configuration for carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, right? That's the electron configuration. Just in case, in case it's been a little bit too long, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, right? Okay, so there's my... Uh, whoa, I can't believe I wrote a 6 up there. Did you catch that? Probably did. Calling me an idiot on the screen, but that's okay. I make mistakes. All right, 2p2. So that means I've got... Uh, a total of six electrons, but when we deal with a Lewis dot structure, all we're going to worry about is the valence electrons. And the inner electrons, or the core electrons, uh, we're not going to worry about. And so in carbon, it, it, the inner ones are those two. So this C right here represents the nucleus, and it represents those two 1s2 electrons. So now what we're going to do is, is draw the valence electrons. And they're just simply represented by dots. Now, because this is a two-dimensional thing, it's it's standard to kind of put the dots on the four sides, all right? Even though in real life they would be in and out of the screen in a three-dimensional way, we're just going to put, put them around it. Now, since there's four valence electrons, these two right there and those two right there, I'm just going to put four dots around the carbon, all right? So that represents the four valence electrons of that atom. All right. And then last but not least, if we have a bond. Now let's say uh, I'm going to make a carbon-carbon bond. All right. Let's say I have another element, another atom here. And it here's its four electrons. All right. If we're going to represent a bond, I would be... It would be either two electrons. Oops, let me move it over. I put them next to each other like that. So you can you can have uh, two atoms like that. See a, a, a bond there. Or you could just write a C with a dash. I'm going to almost always show you the the dots just so you can see where they're coming from. But if you see if you see structures like this, C and H and Cl and BR. If you see something like that, you just need to know that those dashes represent, as it says right here, uh, represents two electrons. Whoa, how about electrons? All right, so there you have it. So that's kind of the basis of, of what we're doing with a Lewis dot structure. The dots represent the electrons, the letter represents the nucleus and those inner electrons. And all this is going to be dealing with the whole Lewis dot structure is the valence electrons. All right? So let's try a couple. Uh, the thing that's important is that, as you know, things bond to get an octet. Whether they're sharing electrons that have an octet or they're transferring electrons, they're going to have an octet. So the rule must be satisfied that they all have an octet except for hydrogen. And hopefully... You recall why hydrogen doesn't need uh, eight. It's because in that first energy level, right, in that first energy level, you can only hold two electrons. So hydrogen only needs two. In other words, hydrogen just needs to bond with one other electron. So here we go. Here's chlorine bonded to itself, all right? Now, how many valence electrons does chlorine have? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it has seven valence electrons. As you know, it wants one more, right? It wants to have an octet. So I'm going to draw a chlorine atom with its seven. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm going to draw another chlorine atom over here. Cl, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a seven. All right, so there are the two, two uh, chlorine atoms with their seven valence electrons. And then all I'm going to do is bring them there. All right? So there you have uh, a Cl2 being represented. Now some uh, some teachers like to like to think about how many valence electrons you have first, count them 14, and work it that way. But I just kind of like to draw it out with uh, the valence electrons that we have available. So here we go. HCl. All right. Oops. Actually, you know, I'll save myself a little time. I've got a Cl right here. All right. And then here's hydrogen. Right. With this one valence electron. Well, look at that. Makes a nice little bond. So that uh, that makes HCl. Okay, These are Lewis dot structures. Look at hydrogen has one, two. It's happy. Chlorine has two, four, six, and eight, and it's happy. Right? CH3I. Whoa. Now, let's see. How do I know which one's the center? Well, I'll tell you this. For our purposes, most of the time... Carbon is the center, or the single element is the center, although not hydrogen, right? Okay, so I'm going to take carbon as my center, put it right here. And uh, let me erase some of this other stuff and get it out of the way. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four? Exactly. Good job. So it's got four valence electrons. And then I have hydrogen, right? Hydrogen with its one valence electron. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring that in here. Okay. Here's another hydrogen. Oops. Here another here's another hydrogen with its one valence electron. Here's another hydrogen with its one valence electron. Look at that. They're making bonds, right? And then last but not least, I have iodine with how many valence electrons? Right? It's a halogen, so it has seven. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I'm just going to take that. Oh, are you kidding me? Can you believe that? Oh, look at that. They're, st they're staying together. Excellent. Okay. How's that? So there's H or CH3I. All right. And then let's do this last one. C oh, actually, you know what? Pause the video. Try to do C2H6. See if you get it. All right. Let's see how you did. I'm going to take my carbon here. Oops. My, my bonds didn't join me. And here's another carbon. Right? The first electron is going to make a bond. Two, three, four. Right? Okay. So now let's bring in some hydrogens. You want to? Here's a hydrogen. Here's a hydrogen. Here's a hydrogen. All right. And then I'll just draw the rest of them in. Put these other ones in green for the heck of it. Hydrogen with its one valence electron, this hydrogen with its one valence electron, and this hydrogen with its one valence electron. All right? And then as you know, every hydrogens want two, so how many electrons does hydrogen have right there? Two. How many does carbon have? Two, four, six, and eight. This carbon over here, two, four, six, and eight. All right? So everyone has an octet of electrons, and they're happy. How's that? Basic Lewis dot structure. We'll be we'll do an activity where you'll practice this, and and if it looks a little confusing right now, don't worry, it's going to get a lot easier. Let's move on to the next thing, polyatomic ions. All right, remember these? I wanted. Whoops, I hate when I do that. Remember these? I wanted you to memorize these. Here's hydroxide, right? And here's phosphate. Well, what do we know about polyatomic ions? Okay, they're just ions with more than one atom, right? We know that.
The thing that's important that we also know about polyatomic ions is they have a charge. And this is important because if I have, uh, if, if for, this, for this phosphate right here with a 3 minus, what does that mean? That means I'm going to add 3 electrons, right? And this one I'm going to add 1 electron. And so now you're going to kind of see why these polyatomic ions form because they wouldn't form without these additional electrons. And that's kind of what I'm just saying right there, right? Single atom is the central atom. I've kind of gone over that. And last but not least, typically you draw brackets around the ion and then write the charge. So let me show you how we do this. All right, so here's, here's oxygen with how many valence electrons? Six, right? So there's six. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons, right? Okay, so now it's got six valence electrons. Here comes hydrogen with its one valence electron, right? Now that makes hydrogen happy because hydrogen... Uh, has two valence electrons, but look at oxygen. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't have enough. So this would not form without the addition of a bonus electron. All right. Remember, this is OH minus, and that minus means it has gained an electron. So I'll just put it right here. When we draw Lewis dot structures, we're not going to worry about the mechanism as to where the electrons get there or how they get there. We're just going to make it fit. So that is uh, the polyatomic ion hydroxide. And as I mentioned in this last bullet, we draw brackets around the ion and write the charge. Now, if you happen to be lazy and don't write the brackets but still write the charge, I'll forgive you. All right, Because sometimes, to be honest, I do make that mistake. I try not to. So let's do phosphate. All right, As, as this bullet says, P goes in the middle. How many valence electrons does phosphate have? Well, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. It has five valence electrons. Oops, went too far. Oh, I'm really losing myself here. Here we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so here's phosphate with its five valence electrons. I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five. I spread them out on all sides. <clears throat> well, here comes an oxygen. I'll put oxygen right there. And then there's one, two, three, <coughs> excuse me, four, five, and then six, right? Here comes another oxygen. One, that first one's going to make a bond. Two, three, four, five, six. Here comes another oxygen. First one, I'm going to make a bond. One, two, three, four, five, and six, all right? Now let's see if everyone has an octet. Well, you can see phosphate here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Phosphate's pretty con or pardon me, phosphorus is pretty content. It has an octet of electrons. However, there's a big problem. Oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one has seven, and this one has seven. And this is why phosphate forms with a minus three charge. All right? As I set up here, right? That means we get to add three electrons. So here come the bonus three electrons. One there, one there, and one there. Now, look at oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? So everyone has an octet. And just to finish this off, I'll put a little bracket around it indicating it's an ion, and I'll write as charge. Okay? So that's a polyatomic ion.